progressing, they're always moving forward. And what we're going to see today is some of the most technologically advanced aircraft the world has ever seen. And the doors have opened on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. The Queen taking her place there and a huge roar, a huge cheer from the crowd. And Roya, we heard the Queen herself underlining the connection that they have, the Royal Family has, with the Royal Air Force. Absolutely, yes. And we just had Carol Vorderman there with the Air Cadets and of course the Duchess of Cambridge is um, honorary air commodore of the air cadets and there you see her wearing the Dacre brooch which is the highest award a female air cadet can be awarded there well there you go the first wave of this huge fly past which is coming over the palace right now three puma helicopters and six chinooks the slowest of the aircraft only traveling at about 100 miles per hour Yes, Sophie, as you say, uh, three Puma HC Mark II helicopters with us today. These are based at RF Benson in Oxfordshire, and they're our medium support helicopter. It has a rich operational history, and is currently deployed in Afghanistan. Similarly, the Chinooks, they're from Odium in Hampshire. This is a heavy lift airplane with an excellent capacity. Both types operated in humanitarian and disaster relief operations uh, in the Caribbean just recently. But that noise of the Chinooks is about to come over the palace now, something you recognise everywhere. smile from Her Majesty the Queen and now we have the second wave these are training helicopters aren't they two Junos one Jupiter yes Sophie uh, in their distinctive yellow and black paint schemes following the Royal Air Force's frontline helicopters are the basic training aircraft including those two Juno H135 helicopters and one Jupiter H145 helicopter and the first of the historic aircraft coming over they're gonna be seven in total part of the Battle of Britain memorial flight based at RAF Coningsby and this is the Dakota a very famous World War II plane followed by Wave 4 the Lancaster accompanied by three Spitfires and two Hurricanes one of those Hurricanes is being flown today by the station commander at RAF Coningsby Mike Borkwell who is a Typhoon pilot but he has chosen history over speed. Wonderful as they go overhead here at Buckingham Palace, the whole studio vibrating. Now bringing us back to the modern days of the RAF. This is the, the prefect training aircraft. Yes, Sophie, uh, from the vintage back to the uh, brand new, uh, these are th uh, the 120 Prefect aircraft based at RAF Cranwell with 57 Squadron. The Prefect modernises the aircraft for use to deliver training to better reflect the types of aircraft the students will fly on the front line. Here come the Tucanos. Yes, Sophie, nine Tucanos in Diamond 9 formation. Most of the pilots in today's fly pass will have cut their teeth on the Tucano. clearly enjoying the spectacle overhead. Now here we have two Shadow R1s. These are the I-Star aircraft. I-Star aircraft perform the Royal Air Force's intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance tasks. This is the only, the second time we've seen the Shadow over Buckingham Palace.
And next over Sophie are the C-130J Hercules aircraft, the primary tactical transport aircraft for the Air Force since 1967. This is a real workhorse for us. And these are the beginning of the big beasts, the Hercules. This only came into force, well, this came into force in 1967. And what a roar it makes as it comes overhead. It is followed now by the Atlas. Another old to new comparison then with 47 years between the C-130 and the A-400 Atlas, which has entered into service uh, recently with Royal Air Force. The aircraft has a 37 ton payload and can carry out over 2,000 miles to remote and unprepared runways. Two more transport aircraft coming over now. One big, one small. The smaller one is a BAE-146. That's going to be very familiar to the royal family because that is the aircraft that is used to transport senior members of the royal family all around the world. Yes, we're seeing the C-17 Globemaster, a long-range strategic heavy lift transport. And behind it, the BA-146, which, as you say, is very familiar to the royal family and ministers. Here comes the Sentinel, another surveillance aircraft. Another of the Royal Air Force's I-Star platforms, the Sentinel R1 is a long-range, wide-area battlefield surveillance aircraft, which is operated today by 5 Squadron, based at Royal Air Force Waddington. The Queen clearly enjoying the spectacle going over the palace today, and this is the biggest of them all. Get ready for the Voyager. It is almost 200 feet long, almost 200 feet wide. It is the RAF's largest aircraft. Our Voyager, operated by 10 and 101 squadrons based at Royal Air Force Bryce Norton, is primarily used for both air-to-air -air refueling and strategic air transport. The aircraft is in constant operational use. the big beasts to come. This is uh, another surveillance aircraft that is, is still playing a, a big role, isn't it, in the skies over Syria and Iraq? Yes, we're looking at the uh, RC-135 Rivet Joint, another one of the Royal Air Force's I-Star aircraft, operated this time by 51 Squadron, again from Wellington. this easily recognisable by the radar on its roof. Behind the rivet joint is the AWACS E3D. That's the Airborne Warning Control System. The E3D Sentry is an airborne early warning aircraft with command and control capacity too. And over it goes. Stand by now for the first of the fast jets. Here they come. These are the Hawk T1s. They're the type of aircraft used by the uh, Red Arrows. There are going to be almost 60 fast jets passing over us in the next few minutes alone. These aircraft are flown by 100 Squadron at RAF Leamy in North Yorkshire. Uh, 100 Squadron uses the Hawk in what we describe as the aggressor role, simulating enemy forces and providing essential training. in a Diamond 9. These are Hawk 2s, which are the more advanced Hawks, aren't they? These are used to train fighter pilots, move them on to the next stage. Exactly that. They're used for advanced fast jet training, the final stage of training before pilots reach operational aircraft. The aircraft has a glass cockpit, and that helps the pilots to transfer to our more modern frontline jets. Tornadoes, nine of them about to pass out overhead. They're going to be retired next year based at RAF Marham. And behind them, you will see the lightnings, the brand new lightnings. Here come the tornadoes.
Sophie, this is the first time and we've seen that formation and it's the largest number of typhoons we have seen ever. Led by Wing Commander Andy Chisholm, over they go. Finishing it all off, squadron leader Martin Pert, red one, bringing the red arrows up the mall. Always a huge favourite with the crowds here. You can hear the cheers. who have gathered here in the Mall. That really was quite a sight, wasn't it, James? A gasp of breath. That was absolutely extraordinary, wasn't it? It sort of, uh, it makes you feel rather emotional, to be perfectly honest. I mean, looking at that and that range of aircraft and to see, you know, actually just how forward-thinking the RAF as well, to see the 100, uh, the 100 formation typhoons, I thought was uh, amazing. And now there will be a feu de joie, the only the third time that this has been carried out in front of Her Majesty the Queen.
The Royal Air Force will remove headdress. Remove headdress. The Royal Air Force will give three cheers for Her Majesty the Queen. centenary and the, the family's very strong connections with the Royal Air Force over 100 years. And that, the turnout today is, is incredible. I mean, the number of people out here to see this on a Tuesday afternoon, but that is one of the biggest flypasts in a generation that we have seen. That's been absolutely extraordinary. It really, really has. I mean, incredibly impressive, wasn't it? I mean, if you don't sort of feel proud of the RF today, you'll never go to. I mean, it was an incredible display. Well, let's ask a man who is serving in the RAF. He must feel very proud. Very proud today. Um, an opportunity to celebrate uh, and, and an opportunity to be really proud of what everyone's put into, what has been a, a, a meticulously planned but also brilliantly executed uh, celebration. Will they be proud of, of what they will they be pleased with what they've pulled off because uh, there, there has been so much planning that went into that. It looked good to me. <laughs> And so, as the uh, RF personnel, they will prepare to march off the forecourt of Buckingham Palace. And uh, the celebrations will, of course, continue this afternoon. But, James, when you reflect back on a century of the RAF, you think of what those, those early pioneers achieved, those, those men in their biplanes, to what we saw today and the new lightnings going ahead. The technology has changed incredibly. Perhaps the pilots haven't so much. The spirit of the RAF is still there. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. That sort of pioneering sense. And also, I mean, you, know, you sort of think about those early days, those people, the excitement, the thrill. I mean, you, you see, I think, these sort of three big bursts of evolution. Obviously, during the First World War, again, during the Second World War. And it feels like we're in a kind of a moment of taking that on another step again at the moment. And the pilots and the air crew and all the people involved in the, in the Air Force today are in a very, very exciting moment, I think, as we step into the second century of the RAF and a, and a phase going forward, I think. And that century, presumably, looking towards space, because that's where the RAF is turning its sights. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I suppose we're also looking to a time where increasingly we're going to have unmanned aircraft as well. You know, if you've got incredibly expensive technology and you don't have to risk people's lives to fly them, that's clearly going to be the way forward. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next 25 years, next 50 years. Well, 